hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Louisa if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and if you're returning what's up welcome back I thought for today's video I might uh, delve into a comment which was left and um, originally I was sort of thinking eh, probably don't need to because I mean technically speaking I've already done the research on that particular one but I haven't shared the research on that particular one and it is a subject worth discussing. Okay, so thanks for your concern. Um, I'm fine. As I said before, I have already delved into the study on this stuff. I was kind of presented with the same question from my ex who uh, when I converted to Christianity was not very happy. So naturally he had a lot of questions about the validity of Christianity and whether he should be uh, forced to adhere to these particular rules. He thought the rules were a bit arbitrary and uh, archaic. But yeah, I've already had this question before and I did investigate the research and psychological studies into how religion does affect people uh, mentally. And the thing is that Christianity outperforms every other type of religion and every other type of spirituality, bar none. So I wrote an article on this um, the other day and I've posted it on my website. So if you're interested in reading further and if you want to have a list of all of the sources, that I have, then that's on the blog post. It'll be linked in the description box underneath. But the studies that I found included things like underprivileged teens and results saying that they were less likely to get involved with drugs. There was a study from Taiwan examining the difference between the Christian community, the Taoist community and the Buddhist community and they found that the Christians were less likely to suffer from dementia in old age. There was a study about marriage counselling where they encouraged married couples who were seeking counselling at the time for relationship problems to either pray or meditate and then they compared the results on that and prayer outperformed meditation and in that particular study it also outperformed in cardiovascular health. There was also a study done in Northern Ireland on mothers to see how their parenting styles were affected by their religious beliefs. The more devout Christian mothers, um, the better the parenting style. And if you've ever studied attachment theory or parenting styles or the psychology to do with early childhood development, then you know that parenting matters a lot in the first three years. It will pretty much make or break someone's entire lifetime. So yeah, Christianity doesn't just outperform in terms of like mental health, but it outperforms in terms of physiological health, in success throughout life, and also in terms of things like resilience. So the ability to withstand adverse conditions. So this is stuff that I had already familiarized myself with before as someone who does psychology research. And unfortunately, I do have access to academic journals, so a lot of what I have in terms of the resources that I quote are from academic journals, and a lot of people don't have access to them. So in the blog post that I've put up the other day, I've actually got screenshots from some of those studies, so you can check that out. But the question was interesting because... Oh, uh, actually, <laughs> I mean, in a lot of ways it probably wasn't even a question, but... The assumption was interesting because it actually prompted me to think, has anyone done studies into the new age? And the answer is yes, they have. So there's not a huge amount of study into the new age and certain psychological conditions associated with it. But the few that there are are very interesting and they shed light on a lot of different things that I've actually hypothesized myself over the years just from observation. So what I found in these studies, what these studies actually managed to uncover about people who are drawn to the new age is that they generally come from a disorganized attachment background. 
If you're not familiar with theories of attachment in psychology, they are extremely worth looking into because they can shed a huge amount of light on why relationships might not be working for you. So there's one particular attachment style which is known as disorganized and it's actually kind of rare but it's really really prevalent in the new age. So people who are drawn to the new age have this attachment style disproportionately to the majority of the population. And disorganized attachment is characterized by when you are a small child having a parent who is both the only source of comfort and protection but also the very thing that you need comfort and protection from. So what happens to kids when they're raised this way is this constant push-pull of like uncertainty. Do I go near my parent or do I run away from them? I don't know. And unfortunately, this is something that I am familiar with because my mother fits into the category of a narcissistic abuser. And I can remember her once telling the story about when my brother was about three years old and she was raging at him and he was freaking out because someone was about to attack him. So he ran around in a circle crying and then when he couldn't find anyone to go to, he went to her. Because unfortunately, she was his mother. And unfortunately, years later, when she tells that story, she tells it from the perspective of someone who finds it funny that a three-year-old was so scared that he ran to the very person who was threatening him. She actually laughed while she was telling the story and said, how stupid is a three-year-old? So unfortunately, in the new age, there are a lot of people who come from backgrounds like that, myself included. And so we've inherited this attachment style where it's not safe to have relationships with people. And it's the sort of thing that tends to alienate people from church and from God, because as these studies noted, a lot of how we relate to father figures like God is how we relate to our actual father and how we relate to mother figures in terms of like the church is how we relate to our earthly mothers. So one of the reasons why people are so drawn to the new age is because it kind of promises emancipation from authority figures similar to your parents and it appears to put the locus of control into your hands. However, when you actually start investigating things and you begin to understand more about psychology and more about spirituality and more about just the world in general, you realize that very little control is in your hands. And in many ways, we really need this kind of higher power in order to not be so stressed. Like if you think about it, if everything is up to you, if everything is on your shoulders, that's a lot of pressure. So that is one very significant way which the New Age differs from Christianity. The New Age teaches that you have control, whereas Christianity teaches that you have to relinquish control to God. So in theory, it should be thy will be done, not my will be done. So unfortunately, when it comes to having grown up in an abusive household, the problems don't really stop with your attachment style. Don't get me wrong, attachment style is very significant. It will pretty much impact all of your relationships throughout your entire life. All of your friendships, all of your partners, your colleagues, everything. How you were shown attachment when you were very small pretty much dictates whether you're able to trust people and whether you're able to form interdependent relationships. 
and to fix certain things like that you have to spend quite a bit of time in therapy which is not the end of the world if it works so yeah attachment styles were something that I had kind of noticed quite a bit in the new age because there's a lot of new age teachers who attempt to try and help people with that and um, you'll usually hear them talk about healing the inner child that is legitimately necessary but the way that they go about it is kind of incomplete because you have to at some point find an attachment figure and the problem with human beings is that they kind of suck which is why if you can learn to trust God it's actually really really helpful But one of the other things that I noticed was a tendency to dissociate. This is actually really, really prevalent in the New Age and it was something that came up in the studies. Sometimes it gets to the point of like a, a personality disorder. So there's quite a few people in the new age who have borderline personality disorder, people who have dissociative identity disorder. And one of the other things that came up in the study was schizotypal disorder. Now they did clarify that it's not usually in the realm of pathology. It's not quite psychosis. It's still within the normal range, but it's getting close. So that is something that people who are exploring the new age really have to watch out for, that they don't engage too much with magical thinking and slip down a mental rabbit hole. Okay, so let's talk about dissociation. If you're not familiar with dissociation, it's kind of the bedrock of a lot of new age practices. So things like astral travel, shamanic journeying, taking psychedelic drugs, all of that stuff relies on an ability to detach from your physicality. People learn to dissociate when they're very, very young and they do it when they're being abused. So when people are being abused, they disconnect from the physical reality that they're currently experiencing and they let their mind go somewhere else. Being someone who dissociates means that you tend to be someone who's not particularly well grounded in reality. And a lot of people seem to get into the new age movement in an attempt to kind of reject reality. It kind of comes back to that wanting to control everything. If you think about something like manifestation, that's very much about control. Even things like channeling and divination are all about trying to control circumstances, trying to control outcomes, and even trying to control people. So people go into the new age trying to figure out how to get that sense of control in their life because they've been so out of control when they were being abused as children. So they're trying to find stability, but the thing is that they're basing it on philosophies that aren't real. And so something that's essentially just made up or cobbled together from all of these different disciplines is not really going to stand up under huge amounts of pressure. Christianity by contrast because it is actually based on something that is real and which hasn't changed for thousands of years does actually have what it takes to provide a sense of stability for people. So if you're still on the fence about this stuff it might be worth investigating because there is something real out there and it's not the trickster beings that you keep encountering in the astral and it's not wishing away your problems by holding on to a crystal. Also, if you're going to talk to people about their mental health, maybe don't try to weaponize any sign of weakness that you see in them. Your friends are not going to be able to trust you or open up to you if every time they try to talk to you about their problems, you turn it against them. 
and just utilize it as a way to discredit anything that they say. If you want to have better relationships, you need to be worthy of people's trust. Don't keep repeating the same patterns that your parents set. And there's one person that will help you out with that, and that is Jesus. Alright guys, hopefully that was helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye.